Hello everyone, I'm Chris Suka and thank you for joining me today on my YouTube channel, New Creation. We're continuing for this Blessed Sunday to look at the centrality of Jesus, Him which was and is and is yet to come. And this is the third part of looking at Jesus as Him which is. As you probably well know, the primary reference for this message is from Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, in which the Apostle John, being carried in the Spirit on the Lord's day, had a revelation of the risen, glorified Savior, in which Jesus said to him, again, this is Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Now, looking at Jesus, we're looking at him which was, and now him which is, and we're looking forward to the day that he comes again. As you likely are all aware, I'm, what I'm going to say right now, press the pause button on me and go get your Bibles and join with me in the scripture. And if you now have your Bibles, please join me in a word of prayer and we'll invite the Holy Spirit and dominion among us. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for revealing yourself in the person of Jesus, that because of Jesus we might know you. Because of Jesus we can see you know you and come before you. So Father, we thank you and we bless you and we praise you. Father, we thank you for putting it in every heart of every person who is watching uh, to be here today. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd send your Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit, you would anoint every ear of every person that is listening, that we would have an ear to hear what you are saying to us, that you would anoint every mind, that you would have a mind to understand, and most of all, Holy Spirit, that you would anoint our hearts, that we would be able to receive it and be transformed by it. Lord, we pray that uh, I would have the ability to speak as I ought to speak, to testify of you and to give you all glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at Jesus him which is. Now, before I go into the main message, there are three spiritual principles I need to be sure that we understand before we can continue. So, spiritual principles number one, if you have an ability to take notes. Principle number one is all scripture bears witness of Jesus Christ. All of Scripture is the story of Jesus. Jesus is found in every part of the Bible in one way or another. Everything testifies of him and his coming. Everything tells the story of Jesus. There are many other things that happen in the Bible. The Bible is history, it is law, it is poetry, it is wisdom. But above all else it is the story of Jesus. The Holy Spirit breathed Scripture leading men to write it so that it would tell us of Jesus. In Psalm 40 verse 7 it is written, Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. This is clearly referring to Jesus, written about in the volume of the book. So principle number one, all of scripture bears witness of the person of Jesus. Principle number two, all scripture agrees with itself concerning him, and revelation is built upon revelation. In Isaiah 28 verse 10, it says, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That, bit by bit through the scripture, the picture becomes clearer. When you read through the scripture, it is often like, sorting through a rather large puzzle 
perhaps one of those thousand piece puzzles and we don't really know how each little bit has to do with any other little bit but it all tells the story of Jesus and only when it is all together do we get the full picture of who Jesus is when the shadow becomes the substance we can look upon the person of Jesus but it all is built piece by piece just as that thousand piece puzzle depends on all one thousand pieces to be put together. So the Bible is line upon line, precept upon precept, and here a little, and there a little. And yet it all agrees with itself concerning the person of Jesus, despite the fact that it was written over a period of one and a half thousand years by more than forty different human instruments. But one Holy Spirit is the author. So that is spiritual principle number two line upon line, precept upon precept, that revelation is built upon revelation, each one bringing us closer to the picture of Jesus. And the third principle is that the old must be removed, that the new might come. That often the old thing stands in the way, but the new must be established. The author of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews 10 verse 9, in quoting part of Psalm 40, seven, he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he might establish the second. That the old covenant had to be done away with, so that a new covenant could be made. We find this at work even within our own personal lives, that the old thing, the old way of thinking, the old way of relating, the old way of anything you could possibly imagine, has to be done away with, in order that the new might come. This is why this channel that you're watching right now is called New Creation from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 which says if any man be in Christ he is a new creation for behold the old has passed away and all things are made new so the old must pass away in order that the new might come that is the third spiritual principle now that we have these three firmly in our minds we can move on Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 7, the author wrote concerning Jesus. He says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin Thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Two important things to keep in mind in reading this passage. One, that God the Father took no pleasure in the sacrifices and burnt offerings, that this was not pleasurable unto God. And that a body has been prepared for the one who is speaking, who, according to the spiritual principle number one, must be Jesus. A body has been prepared for him, by the same one who has taken no pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices, the offerings of bulls and goats, rams and lambs, which can never take away the sin of those who offer them. Now the prophet Isaiah had written, in Isaiah 53, verse 10, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. God took no pleasure in the old burnt offerings and the sacrifices that were acquired under the law which never served to take away sin, in fact, quite the opposite. Their main purpose was to remind us of the presence of our sin, that we need to continually offer a sacrifice, continually trying to make ourselves right in the eyes of God, and yet continually failing, as those things could never remove our sin. So by doing them, we were reminded of our sin, rather than removing it. So God took no pleasure. He didn't accomplish anything other than reminding us our sinfulness and God's holiness. Yet the prophet Isaiah, writing of Jesus, 
in just this one verse, in Isaiah 53, verse 10, remember, line is built upon line and precept upon precept. He said, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That, unlike the rams and lambs, which were not pleasing to God, as they only were a continual reminder of our own sin and our need to be reconciled to him. But it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That Jesus did what rams and lambs could never do. Rams and lambs never took away sin. But Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so the prophet Isaiah, writing as led by the Holy Spirit, 700 years before the coming of Jesus, said that this would please, this pleased the Lord. This was pleasurable to the Lord. The Apostle Paul, writing of Jesus, said the fullness of God dwells in Jesus bodily in his letter to the Colossians. And so when we look upon Jesus, we realize that all of God is present in him, in his person. And because all of God was present in his person, that essentially it pleased God that God should take on all of the penalty of sin on behalf of mankind. That God would do away with the thing that was separating man from God. It's important to note that this never separated God from man, but only man from God. We can think of it this way. When you're on the telephone, sometimes the other person you're trying to talk to has uh, perfect reception. They can hear everything you're saying. You, on the other hand, on your end, might have terrible reception. And when they're hearing you clearly, all you hear is gibberish. And so you cannot speak with them over the phone. They can hear you, you can't hear them. Sin is like that. Sin is like phone static. God can hear us. We can't hear him. God's arm is not shortened. His ability to reach down to us has never been limited. But our ability to receive him has been. Sin is the thing that tries to stand between us and God. And the animals that were continually sacrificed never served to take down that wall that was standing between us and God. But Jesus, in whom the fullness of the Godhead would dwell bodily, was able to take down that wall by his own death, which is why, as the prophet wrote, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It's important to note in this verse, in Isaiah 53, verse 10, that words dealing with pleasure, it pleased the Lord in the beginning of the verse, and the pleasure of the Lord at the end of the verse, serve as bookends. And remember the third spiritual principle, that the old must be removed that the new might come that it would please the Lord that the Word should be made flesh and dwell among us, and that this same Word would be nailed to a tree. He would be put to grief, made an offering for sin, a pleasing aroma unto the Lord, and that this old would be removed, and that this same one who had made his soul an offering for sin would be buried in the tomb, and on the third day rise again. And so when he arose from the dead, he removed the old, bringing in the new. But it didn't end with this. For Jesus, ten days after he rose from the grave, he ascended on high to the right hand of the Father in glory. Remember, the third spiritual principle is that he removes the first that he might establish the second according to Hebrews 10, verse 9, that Jesus' body, which was put to grief, would have to be removed, that a new body would be formed. Jesus is the seed. That, if we can think about it this way, 
If you plant a seed, you'll, that's how you will get more seed. The only way to plant a seed is to destroy the seed that you have. If you have an apple seed, you will plant that seed. The seed will die in the ground. And yet, when it grows into a tree, how many kilograms of apples will it produce? Every year, potentially for 50 to 100 years, that apple tree will keep on producing seed. All from one seed. Jesus is that one seed. He was buried in the ground. And by being willing to be buried in the ground, he produced abundant seed. That what was buried as one human body, for Jesus was fully God and fully man, would become a body comprised of many, many members. And not only once, but for all time. That if you're watching right now and you've believed on him, you're part of that body. A body that has been around on earth in physical human beings for 2,000 years. Because for the last two millennia, there have been people who have believed on our Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And because of that, he has a body here, which you're a part of that in Psalm 22 verse 30 it says a seed shall serve him it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation that there is a seed that was planted and this has produced seed in abundance of which you are a part of if you have believed on him that he took away the first that it might establish the second that the body of our Lord Jesus was raised to glory to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And because of this, a new body would be established here in the earth. That the purpose of God would be fulfilled. For when the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, well, this is how you are to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so Jesus now has a body here on earth. And as we are his body here on earth, he is our head in heaven. So heaven and earth are joined in the person of Jesus because his body is here and his head is there. And yet, as we saw in my last message, he reigns in our hearts through faith. So while Jesus is in heaven, and we're looking forward to him who is yet to come, he is also here, currently, reigning in us who believe on him. The Apostle Paul wrote of this in his letter to the Ephesians. So again, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have to find it also in my Bible. So Ephesians chapter 1. New Testament, verses 15 through 23. The Apostle writes, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, that filleth all in all.
We are his body, established here in the earth. That the body of Jesus was buried as the seed. Because he was buried, he's given rise to a new body. That he took away the first, that he might establish the second. He rose to the place of the Father, so that his body could be grown here on earth. And because his body has been grown here on earth, he will one day come back for us. He will one day come back to us, and we will see him. That in his body is the expression of the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Our Lord Jesus reigning here in his body, of which you are a part of. Amen and amen. Because Jesus is the one who was. He was in the beginning. Before time began, he set all things in motion. Jesus is also the one which is, for he is now. For as the Apostle John said in John 1 verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But that same body went to the cross, dying for all of us, and rising for all of us. To ascend to the right hand of the Father in glory, to fill the heavenly places, that all things would have to bow before him, that he would fill all things, that the one who made all things could also then rule all things, giving a rule that is to give life, that him who is the eternal word could speak that word over all of his creation, saying, live in my name, because I live, you shall live also. Amen. Let us bow our heads and just give the Lord a word of thanks for his glorious goodness unto us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father of glory. For Father, you are good. Your glory was revealed to us in the person of Jesus. As the scripture says, we have beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten, your only begotten whom you gave for us. Father, I thank you that you, by your own goodness, by your own love, have seen fit to make us a body for your own dear Son, that you have sent forth your own Holy Spirit who cries within us, Abba, Father, that because of you, in Jesus, by your own Holy Spirit, we can come before you. We can be in you and know you. We can rest in you. Father, I pray for each person listening that we would know you more. That if we feel that we've walked away, we'd recommit our lives to you. If we haven't known you, Father, if, if there is any person who's present right now listening who doesn't yet know you, I pray that, that each one would bow the knee and say, Lord, I believe in you, that you died for my sins, Lord Jesus, and you rose again for me, that I made right because of you, by your grace, that you bought me. My life doesn't belong to myself, but it belongs to you. Father, we pray that we would know you more and give you all glory. Bless each one that has heard the word, and bless us through the coming week, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. God bless. Goodbye for now.